here we go to get data button we should click more so this is going to be uh, one of the basic uh, data sources Azure section and then we have a Azure table storage we connect to that data source first we have to type in the name of the account this is a this is a storage account and then we put the code access code and then we wait for the list of tables okay we get a list of tables and then we select all of the tables that we need to import we've got some of those tables you can see the we can see the preview and we see actually three columns with the meaningful data and the fourth column with the with the content the first three columns are are constant like so this is a they are they are every everywhere in all of these tables let's have a look how power bi handles that type of data now we have a power query window and then we can read and see how Power Query sees that data, which is imported from, from Azure Table Storage. All right. We, ha we have a partitioning key. And in my data, we, we do not have uh, any value there or any meaningful value. This is a, the second column is a, is a key column. And each one of the tables it contains a unique value of the of the record. So so when you when you reload data there, then we we can see which record is is a new one, which is the which is just needs an, an update. So we have a date of of uh, entering data. And then we have a content, the real content. We we need we need a key column and we need a content table. Uh, sorry, we need a content column. And other columns are not needed, so I'm going to remove them. And then we are left with two columns, row key, and this is a sales quota key in this in this example of that table and I'm, I need to place a new name for that column say it's quota key and then we need to expand this um, content of of all of those records if we click there you can you can preview uh, we can also have a look what what columns are uh, inside this content of of a single row Okay, we go back one step and we will have a look. Okay, you should uncheck the prefix and we can import all of the columns uh, that are there. So we now see new columns and those new columns, uh, some of them are going to be needed, some of them not. Okay, so I need those three columns and the last one Okay, it, you can see that the name is uh, the same as the first one, but you see that there are null values. So comparing to the first column, there's nothing interesting. So I'm not going to need it. Okay, let's delete that column. And the rest of the columns, we should actually um, establish their data types so we have a, a decimal number we have a whole number and we have a whole number here and again whole number as a data type and my table is almost ready i just rename it as a, uh, as some like a more user-friendly name and that query 
we is going to have a sales quarter name. So let's have a look at uh, some other table. This is a product category and we will have a look how to do it a little bit quicker. We start the same, so those two columns, the rest go is going to be uh, removed. Content of all of those records, so we have a new columns. We, okay, that, that column is not needed, so we just see the key and we rename the key with a like with a with a table name prefix so this is product category key and uh, now of course we should we should give it a proper name for a whole table and then i need to set the proper data types for each one of the columns in transform tab we have a button called detect data type and uh, it will power query it will try to detect data type uh, from all of the selected columns you see now that first uh, column was selected and that first column the data type of that f first column was was properly detected we should always try to give it a proper data type so power bi will know how to uh, how to store data properly so we have to do that also for the other column and here we go for all of the columns we have proper data types detected don't forget that if you select all of the columns then automated de detection will will work for all of those columns so again other date date uh, table so again two columns the key column and the content column now rename the the, the one to date key uh, and now expand uh, let's have a look what's inside date key column is not needed because that 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 was already uh, present in the header so now we will see the rest of columns okay the, the the columns are expanded and then have a look all of those columns are selected are brought to my table and now uh, i'm selecting all of the columns and then i press detect data type and then here we go all of those columns have selected data types so everything you see, this is the text value, this, that was a text. We have date, okay, we have date time. We should also actually change it to date. We do not need date and time. We won't need to analyze time. And all that date table is already um, prepared for further loading. So, Let's have a look. I quickly do that for the rest of the tables. Just give me a minute. So, in days, in days of, in the case of um, sales quota, sales quota key is actually not needed because it won't be present in any of analysis that i'm going to do to perform with uh, with uh, with uh, power bi so that types of columns the key columns that are not used anywhere are actually not needed they should be removed so the our model is going to be smaller so if you need that type of uh, information then you should actually you know throw it away same for other uh, fact tables okay everything is ready so you press the close and apply so that data is going to be loaded 